This is Dr. JFM presenting the case of a 14-year-old uh, patient with a previous orbitocygomatic approach for what was thought to be a brainstem lesion that happened to actually be a clival chordoma invading the brainstem. Clival chordomas are challenging tumors at the base of the skull that require significant experience to achieve good resection rates. These tumors sometimes involve the upper petroclaval region for which we describe the transcavernous posterior clinoidectomy with an interdural pituitary transposition. This is based on understanding the anatomy of the layers of the dural decavernous sinus, including the medial wall of the cavernous sinus and the recently described paracellar ligaments. These ligaments anchor the medial wall to the carotid and we need to transect this ligament as well as the inferior hypophyseal artery to get access to the posterior clinoid. The approach will give us access to the brainstem, the basilar artery and its branches, and it's very important to understand the anatomy of the sixth nerve at its different segments. So we have performed now our endonasal endoscopic approach. We are working transclival, exposing the right carotid artery on the paraclival segment down to the Lacerum segment. Now we are exposing the paraclinoidal carotid on the left side. Now we're drilling the mid clivus and we start seeing tumor invading in between the two layers of dura, as it is so typical for these clival cordomas. I'm now getting a good margin in ferrule to make sure there is all clean of tumor. And now we're working on removing the posterior clinoids on both sides as well as the dorsum cella. We are dopplering the anterior wall of the cavernous sinus, so we can directly incise the anterior wall without injuring the carotid artery. Once we open the anterior wall of the cavernous sinus, we obtain significant venous bleeding that is actually easily controlled with gentle packing. As we open the cavernous sinus, we identify the inferior hypophyseal artery I'm now opening the anterior wall of the cavernous sinus superiorly all the way towards the clinoidal segment of the carotid artery. We are now cutting the floor of the cavernous sinus, giving access to the posterior clinoid. We see tumor embedded in the posterior clinoid. This happens to be a very prominent posterior clinoid and a large inferior hypophyseal artery located just above it. I'm trying to carefully dissect the posterior clinoid from the dura, but the dural attachments are very robust. I'm seeing here now the inferior paracetal ligament. This is being transected. This attaches the middle wall of the cavernous sinus to the carotid. And after transecting this ligament, I can now mobilize better the posterior clinoid and the middle wall of the cavernous sinus. But still we have the attachment by the inferior hypophyseal artery, which I have to coagulate and transect. And after this, I can finally cut the dura that surrounds the posterior clinoid. This is gonna allow me to now use the dissector to gently remove the posterior clinoid. We can see it's posterior lateral extension and I can now remove the posterior clinoid completely, the dorsum cella, and now we're removing the posterior clinoid on the left side of the patient. In this case, since I have more space, I can do it in an extradural fashion, but I still I get venous bleeding from the cavernous sinus, which is easily controlled. Finally, removing the dorsum cella posterior clinoid allows me to remove all the tumor that is invading the interdural space and this outer layer of dura is going to be extensively removed. I'm seeing now the sixth nerve at the interdural segment now on the left side and now on the right side I'm cutting the dura around the relos canal making sure with electrical stimulation that I am preserving the abducens nerve. It is very important to reach the limit. This is the inferior petrosal sinus bleeding there and I trim all this dura because it's potentially involved with tumor. That dural thickening there is the petrosphenoidal or Gruber's ligament 
that is located just posterior to the abducens nerve. I continue dissecting the dura that is thickened and potentially involved with tumor. I'm doing the similar operation on the patient's left side, preserving the sixth nerve, but at the same time maximizing the resection of the dura. And that is the penetration of the tumor through the inner dura layer and through the arachnoid into the superarachnoid space. I'm doing a wide dural opening because all this dura is also potentially involved and needs to be transected. Unfortunately, because of the previous operation, there are significant additions between the dura, the arachnoid, and the basilar artery. This requires very careful meticulous dissection to prevent a vascular injury. We are finally able to remove all this dura and separate it safely from the basilar artery. And there is a small remnant of tissue that is very adherent to the wall of the basilar artery. And this requires, again, very careful meticulous technique to achieve a complete resection, but at the same time, without causing any vascular injury. This is done with sharp dissection mostly, avoiding pulling that could injure the basilar artery. After this portion is finished, we identify the invasion of the tumor into the brainstem. We're gonna find a plane to safely dissect this pontine perforating branch. There is also significant scar tissue in this area, which makes the operation more difficult. But I'm now finding a plane between brainstem and tumor. And I can finally start scooping the tumor out from the inside of the brainstem. I find another pontine perforating branch inferiorly and posteriorly, and this has to be very carefully preserved. After dissecting the vessel and separating it from the tumor, I can continue opening the capsule of the tumor and entering the brainstem so I can find a plane of dissection between tumor and neural tissue. The tumor is removed in a piecemeal fashion, and now using the two sections in a very controlled fashion, I can remove any residual tumor within the pons. In fact, there is a membrane of tissue that I actually removed carefully, sent to the pathologist, and they came back saying that was no tumor so we obtain a complete tumor resection. The reconstruction is done with a collagen layer, then fascia lata, then a fat graft, and importantly, an extended, healthy nasoceptal flap. Postoperatively, the tumor was completely removed, as evidenced on the MRI. The patient did very well with no complications, normal pituitary function, no CSF leak, and an intact sixth nerve. Thank you.